Hello everyone, today we will discuss about Klinefelter syndrome. So what is Klinefelter syndrome? Klinefelter syndrome is a genetic disorder uh, in which there are two or more X chromosomes in a male. Okay, so the karyotype it can range from XXY, XXXY and also here we can see there are two Y chromosomes. So the defining feature is presence of two or more X chromosome and the Y chromosome can even also be more than one in number. It is named after Harry Kleinfelter and the incidence is 1 in 660 live male births. In this video, we will discuss about the genetics and the characteristics of the Kleinfelter syndrome. Now going to the genetics. The genetics, uh, the classical karyotype associated is 47XXY. Now how does uh, this karyotype takes place is due to meiotic non-disjunction. Now what is meiotic non-disjunction? Uh, this I have discussed in detail in uh, my video uh, of Down syndrome. However, briefly we will discuss in this video also. This uh, uh, what is meiotic non-disjunction? So if this is a cell and uh, this are, these are the pair of homologous chromosomes. So non-disjunction means failure of separation of the homologous or sister chromatids. Here we can see this cell gets both the uh, chromosomes and this will lead to uh, abnormal gametes with one gamete having n plus one number of the chromosome and the other gamete having n minus one number of chromosomes and if that chromosome uh, which is uh, extra is x chromosome if the uh, this has two x chromosome and then it is fertilized by a, a sperm having a y chromosome it will lead to karyotype xxy okay this non disjunction can also take place during meiosis 2 uh, here we can see like here the meiosis 2 after meiosis 2 also non disjunction can takes place and me this meiotic non disjunction can take place either in the mother or in the father okay so uh, we have understood that there is a meiotic non disjunction but one thing to remember is that in a female, normal female, if we have two X chromosomes, okay, so one X chromosome gets inactivated, which is known as leonization, okay. So, in patient with Klinefelter syndrome also, uh, there is inactivation of the extra X chromosomes, so that only one X chromosome remains active. So why do these patients, they have symptoms of hypogonadism and associated features? For that, we have to understand about the androgen receptor gene. Okay. Now, uh, androgen receptor gene uh, codes on X chromosome. Okay. So if this is androgen, that's, that is testosterone, example testosterone, it uh, acts on androgen receptor. And then there is the effect which is shown on the body. Now the gene encoding androgen receptor is present on the X chromosome. And this gene has a very specific thing. It has trinucleotide repeats in the form of CAG. It have multiple CAG repeats. Now what is uh, characteristic about this CAG repeats is that if the CAG repeats, they are more in number. If they are longer, then what will happen is the androgen response will be less on the androgen receptor gene, on the androgen receptor. However, if the CAG repeats are shorter, the androgen response will be more pronounced. Okay, so the functional response to the androgens is dictated by the number of the CAG repeats. With shorter CAG repeats, the effect of the androgens is more pronounced. Now what happens in Klinefelter syndrome is that the 
X chromosome, which has shortest CAG repeat, is preferentially inactivated, leaving the gene with longest CAG repeats. Okay. Now, the persons with Klinefelter syndrome, they have firstly low testosterone level and along with that, they have longest CAG repeats present in the androgen receptor, which leads to very low expression of the testosterone, uh, a low effect of the testosterone, which exacerbates the hypogonadism. Okay. One reason is this. Secondly, also, if inactivation takes place of the X chromosome, 15% of the X-linked genes, they do not get inactivated. So, always there is an extra dose of these genes which will lead to the hypogonadism. Okay, this was the genetics part of the Klinefelter syndrome. Now, let's understand about the characteristics. Characteristics, they are patient can be rarely diagnosed before the puberty and they have a distinctive body habitus. They have a appearance of an elongated body and abnormally long legs. The length from the pubic bone to the sole is increased in these patients. There is also lack of secondary sex characteristics which are due to testosterone. Example like deep voice, there is lack of the male distribution of the hair. Also, there is small atrophic testis present along with small penis. There is presence of gynecomastia also in these patients. Now we will understand about the testis. We understood that the testis is atrophic. But what is the histology of the testis? The seminiferous tubules, they are atrophied. There are few seminiferous tubules which are normal, but many seminiferous tubules get atrophied and they are replaced by hyaline ghost like tubules. Okay, there is hyalinization of the tubules, there is fibrosis, and also one characteristic thing is there is Leydig cell hyperplasia due to increase in the FSH and LH, there is increase in the Leydig cells. Okay. Now, uh, going back to the characteristics, the IQ of the patient is mostly normal but is slightly lower than the normal. There is also increased in incidence of certain diseases like type 2 diabetes, metabolic syndrome, mitral wall prolapse, in some tumors like breast cancer and extragonadal germ cell tumors and few autoimmune diseases like SLE. Okay. Now going to the diagnosis. For the diagnosis, the definitive diagnosis is by karyotyping. There is a separate video on karyotyping. So in karyotyping, we can see this, uh, this picture shows a karyotype. Here we can see there is presence of a Y chromosome and two X chromosome which defines the Klinefelter syndrome. For the biochemical changes, there is uh, increase in FSH, LH, there is a reduction in testosterone level and the plasma estradiol level, the estrogen level, they are elevated. The ratio of the estrogen to the testosterone will define the degree of the feminization in the patient. But remember, the definitive diagnosis of the Klinefelter syndrome can be only made on karyotyping. This is all for this video. Do like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching this video.